Good day, peace and all good. Welcome to St. Joseph's College of Quezon City Graduate School Department and welcome to this year's Virtual Orientation Program. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sheila Marie Hoxson. Let us put ourselves in the presence of our God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for giving us another school year to study, to prepare for a great life in the future forever grateful for the chances and the opportunities to continue learning amidst the pandemic which caused a lot of adjustments and changes in our lives. Bless all of us and of course our dear loved ones with healthy thoughts, feelings, behavior, and a lot of character strengths in our personal, social, academic career and spiritual life for us to sustain, survive for holistic well-being. Bless also our dear school administrators, professors, staff, and of course the whole St. Joseph's College Graduate School, Quezon City, and for doing their best to guide, enable, inspire us, especially in this trying time. Bless also our frontliners, the people, and of course our community and our country who continue fighting for this pandemic. This we ask through the intercession of our Mother Mary and St. Joseph. Amen. Name the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Ang Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas St. Joseph's College of Quezon City is run by the Sororum Franciscalium Immaculada Concepcione de Mater Dei or the SFIC Congregation, who first arrived in the Philippines in 1929 upon the invitation of Bishop Constant Jurgens, CICM. Five Dutch nuns, Mother Chantal Thomas, Sister Margareta Hermas, Sister Bertolda Bosch, Sister Catherine Hendricks and Sister Alfonso Jacobs first started their mission in Nueva Vizcaya before moving to Manila to continue their mandate to educate the Filipino youth. With the 1932 founding of St. Joseph's Academy, under the guidance of the first school directress, Mother Magdala Verhuizen, the school admitted its first primary school pupils in 1932 and drew children from the rapidly growing communities of New Manila, Camuning, and San Juan. The following year, the high school department was opened. St. Joseph's Academy Chapel 
was completed in 1935. During the Japanese occupation, the school was closed down and the buildings were used as a mini military hospital by the Japanese army and later by the US military. Much of the buildings of the school still remain intact after the Second World War, with numerous renovations over the decades. Galo Ocampo and national artist Botong Francisco were commissioned to paint murals in the interior of the chapel in 1944. As the operations at the St. Joseph's Academy normalized, the school officially changed its name to St. Joseph's College of Quezon City in 1948. The name coincided with the opening of the college department with programs in education, liberal arts, secretarial science, and music. These led to a flourishing of the performance arts at the school. To accommodate the demands of such highly professional performances, an open-air auditorium was constructed in 1950. Also, the School of Music building was completed in 1962 and later on, the Mater Dei Auditorium was completed in 1966. To accommodate the growing number of students, the Kindergarten Building was built in 1953, and the first college building was built in 1957. At the center of the campus is the Georgians Hall Dormitory, which was named after Bishop Constant Georgians CICM. The dormitory was completed in 1957. 1957 was also the year that SJCQC was admitted as one of the charter members of the Philippine Accrediting Association of Schools, Colleges, and Universities, or PAASCU. In 1961, the third floor elevation of the main building was completed, and in 1964, the W. Aben building was built. The present college building was constructed in 1967. The quality of education that the school provides produce students who are critical and socially aware. With this, the school became a bastion of social activism. With the revision of the school's vision, mission, and core values, the late afternoon shift high school was established in 1976 to accommodate poor but deserving students in the neighboring barangays. In 1981, the grade school was formally accredited. It was followed by the formal accreditation of the high school in 1984. The two departments have since undergone accreditations to maintain the quality of education that the school is known for. In 2001, the Commission on Higher Education or CHED conferred to St. Joseph's College of Quezon City the autonomous status for the continuing exemplary performance in instruction, research, and public service. In 2002, the Special Education Department was opened to cater to students who have special learning needs. With the growing demand for health professionals, the Institute of Nursing was established in 2004. Also, on the same year, CHED recognized the school as one of the few providers for the expanded Tertiary Education Equivalency and Accreditation Program, or ETAP. In 2008, the school was recognized by the Federation of Accrediting Agencies of the Philippines, or FAAP. In 2012, the social work program was granted Level 4 accredited status by FAA, the first social work program to qualify as such in the entire Philippines. In 2013, the kindergarten, grade school, and high school merged into one basic education department. With the implementation of the K-12 program by the Department of Education, 
The senior high school was opened in school year 2018-2019. In 2019, the senior high school was integrated into the basic education department. The grade school and junior high school passed the PASCO accreditation as one basic education in 2020. The pandemic has drastically changed the way things are done in school. The distance learning program was fully implemented for the first time in school year 2020-2021. The school will celebrate its 90th founding anniversary on June 5, 2022. St. Joseph's College of Quezon City is a Filipino Catholic Franciscan educational institution. We seek to contribute to nation building. We seek to spread God's goodness, wisdom, and love. We seek to be of service to the least, the last, and the lost. The official colors of the school are maroon, white and gold that stand for passion, purity, and perfection. The school's vision. St. Joseph's College pursues integral human formation anchored on gospel values to enable the youth to become effective instruments for social transformation. The school's mission. Inspired by our vision, we commit ourselves to provide relevant programs and services to form our school community to be God-loving, evangelizing, and responsible members of society. In keeping with our Franciscan tradition, we continue to be moved by God's goodness, wisdom, and love to be a caring and nurturing community. The school upholds the following core values in all its programs and services. Simplicity. We shall live a simple lifestyle, caring for Mother Earth, taking only what is enough and necessary to sustain a healthful and dignified existence. Truth. We shall uphold honesty and sincerity consistency and integrity in thoughts, words, and actions. Justice. We shall foster right relationship with God, with oneself, with others, and with creation as a whole. Peace. We shall be peace builders, peace that comes from an inner contentment and serenity from a sense of community with and among peoples and nations, from a dialogue of cultures and religions. Integrity of creation. We shall affirm a deep Christian conviction that all life is sacred because God is the creator of all. Ladies and gentlemen, Sister Esperanza Vistro, SFIC. Good morning, peace and all good. First of all, I would like to wish you and your families the best of health and safety in this difficult time. A warm welcome to all of you, dear students of the Graduate School. A happy welcome to our new and returning students. And for our professors who have chosen to serve another year with St. Joseph's College, a pleasant welcome to you all. Let us all look forward to a fruitful, meaningful, and safe school year. As we start school year 2021-2022, I think of renewed hope, joys of learning, new opportunities, 
better communitarian spirit, growth, and above all, gratitude. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to disrupt all facets of our life. Nonetheless, this pandemic will not deter our ministry and we will continue to serve the educational needs of our students. I am confident that just like school year 2020-2021, we will boldly face the challenges before us because the Josephine education is a needed response at this moment. Despite the seeming bleakness, I have a good news to share. As JCQC will celebrate its 90 years of service. Yes, we will be celebrating our 90th foundation anniversary on June 5, 2022. Truly, this is a celebration of 90 years of Catholic education at the service of our people, the Church, our country, and the whole of creation. This is the theme to celebrate our milestone, and there are nine major activities lined up until June 5, 2022. These are, number one, Hapak Ni San Jose Community Pantry. This is SJCQC's contribution to help the poor in the surrounding barangays. Donations in cash and in kind support our Hapag San Jose. We accept blessings shared from the members of the SJC school community, the alumni, and other kind-hearted persons. This is done monthly, starting June. In St. Joseph's Lecture Series, we will do this in August, October, and December. This is to celebrate the year of St. Joseph, which will culminate on December 8, 2021. Number three, renovation and repainting of the SJC facade. The work has started last August 28. Number four, tree planting on October 4, the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Number five, audiovisual presentation on the history of St. Joseph's College. Number six, Amin Tribo and Gawad San Jose. Number seven, Pasco Resurvey of the College of Arts and Sciences. Number eight, Grand Alumni Homecoming. And number nine, St. Joseph Exhibit. So brace yourself for an exciting school year. I sincerely pray to the good Lord that in this school year 2021-2022, He may be more beneficent to us, bringing prosperity to the whole world, creating abundance and restoring a healthy human family. We will get through this health crisis as we continue to trust in God's divine mercy and compassion, observing health protocols, living healthy lives, and supporting those in need. To all of you, thank you for joining us in this virtual orientation. May the information, policies, and guidelines you will hear guide you in your pursuit of postgraduate studies. May the Lord God bless us all, and may St. Joseph continue to protect us and sustain us in all our endeavors. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the administration, faculty, and staff.
Ladies and gentlemen, here are the program offerings of St. Joseph's College of Quezon City Graduate School Department. Master of Arts in Education major in Special Education, Guidance and Counseling, Educational Management, Language Teaching. Master of Arts in Early Childhood Education major in Special Education, Master in Business Administration, Master in Psychology, Master in Hospital Management, Doctor of Philosophy in Special Education, Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Leadership and Management, Doctor of Philosophy in Guidance and Counseling. The Policies and Guidelines of the Graduate School Students must wear casual or decent clothing in their online classes. Students who transferred residence or changed their civil status should inform the office of the graduate school in writing. With regards to suspension of classes, the following are authorized to suspend classes. Pag-asa during Typhoon Signals number 3 or 4, the local government unit through the mayor's office, and St. Joseph's College of Quezon City, President's Office. For you to be updated, general announcements such as suspension of classes, change of the schedule, and the like are sent through email and are posted on the bulletin board. Group announcements are sent via email and are posted on the bulletin board, and individual messages are sent via email and text messaging. The official email address of the graduate school is sjcqz.gs at gmail.com Instructional Policies In terms of course load, each student is allowed to carry a maximum of 12 units of courses and a maximum of 9 units of major courses in a semester. Enrollment Schedule The enrollment schedule will be emailed and posted on the bulletin board. Students are strongly encouraged to enroll at the earliest possible time. Late enrollment will be penalized. Change of registration. Addition or change of course shall be within the first two weeks of the semester. Dropping of course shall not be done later than one week before the midterm examinations. Request for forms shall be done via email through the official account of the registrar's office, registrar at sjcqc.edu.ph. Change of Program Students who wish to change their program of study, including change from or to thesis or non-thesis program, must signify their intention by accomplishing a form available at the registrar's office. The request must be endorsed to and approved by the Dean. Tutorial Classes A tutorial class is formed from a class size of 7 students or less. Tutorial classes are held for 25 hours spread out for the whole semester. The blended learning modality shall be adopted. Synchronous sessions will be held and asynchronous activities will be given. Tutorial fees must be paid at the finance office. Student classification. A student is considered full-time if he or she enrolls 9 to 12 units, part-time if 3 to 6 units. A student will be considered an MA or PhD candidate once he or she fulfills the following requirements. Passed the comprehensive examinations, defended the thesis or dissertation proposal, and passed the final defense but has not submitted the revised paper. An MA or PhD graduate is someone who is issued the official transcript of records. A cross enrollee is a student enrolled in another graduate school who secured a written permit from the registrar of the home school to enroll in selected courses at the St. Joseph's College of Quezon City Graduate School. 
Standards for Admission Master's degree applicants who are non-education graduates are required to take the prerequisite requirement of 12 units of education courses except for Master of Education, Major in Guidance and Counseling. All students, regardless of their field of specialization, must have no grade lower than 2.00 or 85-87% to 87 for master's degree and 1.75 or 88-90% to 90 for doctor's degree. A student is expected to finish the program according to the specified number of terms. Residency a master's student is given a maximum of five years of residency. A doctor's degree student is given a maximum of seven years residency. A student who exceeds the number of terms shall be penalized a proportionate number of units of cognates as refresher courses. For MA, it will be nine units. And for PhD, it will be 12 units. Leave of absence. A student who will not enroll the following term should apply for a leave of absence or LOA. An LOA is good for one year. A second application for LOA may be considered. If LOA is more than two years, the student should retake six units. And if beyond five years, none of the previously taken courses will be credited. Attendance and Punctuality All students are required to attend the scheduled classes. Any student who incurs absences equal to 20% of the total number of hours of class recitation is considered dropped in the course. For regular classes, it will be up to 10 hours. And for tutorial classes, it is 5 hours. Crediting Courses for students from other schools, courses taken the year before a two-year leave can be credited. For example, courses taken from 2014 to 2015 can be credited in school year 2017-2018. Transfer of Credits Graduate courses taken from other schools may be credited provided that such courses have equivalent courses in St. Joseph's College of Quezon City. Evaluation of transfer of credits is subject to the approval of the Dean. A maximum of one-third of the total number of academic units, excluding theses or dissertation, required for a degree may be accepted as transfer credited units. For MA, it is a maximum of 13 units. For MA non-thesis, it will be a maximum of 14 units. And for PhD, it is 17 units. All major courses must be taken in the graduate school. Major courses taken in other schools are not credited. A student may cross-enroll in another school only after securing the written permission of the dean. Students will be given the following grades. Excellent is 1.00. Superior is 1.25. Very good is 1.50. Good is 1.75. And average is 2.00. No grade of incomplete shall be given to students. A student who fails to submit the necessary course requirements within the specified term shall be given one semester extension to submit the same. The grade a student can earn in this case shall not be higher than 1.5. In case of failure to comply with the requirements, a grade of failed shall be given to the student. Students who exceed the allowable number of absences, which is 20%, will earn a grade of failed. Comprehensive examinations. Students are allowed to take the comprehensive examinations only after they have completed all the basic, core, and cognate courses, including practicum. Comprehensive examinations are scheduled once every term. 
at least two weeks before a student takes the comprehensive examinations, he or she must apply for a permit at the office of the graduate school. Only students with permits shall be allowed to take the exams. A student who fails the exams may apply for a retest. The student will take a retest only in the area or areas where he or she failed. A student who fails the second time must audit the courses in which he or she failed. After auditing, the student may take the comprehensive exams for the third time. If the student fails again, he or she is automatically dropped from the program. The student is officially informed about the results of the examinations by the dean about three weeks after the last testing date. The comprehensive examinations are scheduled for two Saturdays, from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. The medium shall be pen and paper. The scope shall include research methodology, statistics, core courses, cognates. The following fees shall be settled before the comprehensive examinations. For MA, it is 3,000 pesos and for PhD, it is 5,000 pesos. And the fee must be paid through bank deposit, bank transfer, or Palawan Express. Research Policies and Guidelines To be eligible to enroll in Thesis 1, Dissertation 1, or Master's Project Paper Writing, a student should have First, completed the academic requirements of the program and passed the comprehensive examinations. Thesis Writing is a six-unit coursework subdivided into two courses Thesis 1 for Proposal Writing and Thesis 2 for Final Research. Dissertation Writing is a 9-unit coursework subdivided into three courses. Dissertation Writing 1 for Proposal, Dissertation Writing 2 for Colloquium, and Dissertation Writing 3 for Final Research. Enrollment Validity Enrollment to thesis is valid for three years or six consecutive terms. Enrollment to dissertation is valid for four years or eight consecutive terms. And enrollment for master's project paper is valid for one year. Enrollment in thesis or dissertation is to be done continuously until it is successfully finished. A student who goes beyond the enrollment validity shall be required to retake the thesis cycle. In other words, six units prerequisite subjects to thesis writing will be required of the candidate. A student is allowed a maximum of two re-enrollments in thesis 1 and thesis 2. A student who fails to comply with the requirements of either thesis 1 or thesis 2 after two re-enrollments will take six units of refresher courses in statistics and research methodology. A student who fails to comply with the requirements of Thesis 1 or Thesis 2 during the first semester is allowed to complete the requirements during the second semester without re-enrolling the course. This policy does not apply if the course is enrolled in summer. Failure to enroll Thesis 1 or Thesis 2 after two years will require the student to enroll six units of refresher courses in statistics and research methodology. A student who fails to comply with the requirements of Dissertation 1 or Dissertation 3 during the first semester is allowed to complete the requirements during the second semester without re-enrolling the course. This policy does not apply if the course is enrolled in summer. Failure to enroll Dissertation 1 or Dissertation 3 after two years will require the student to enroll six units of refresher courses in statistics and research methodology. Here is the process for thesis or dissertation writing. First, the student submits a concept paper to the dean's office. Then, 
the dean in consultation with the faculty of the particular discipline recommends an advisor who is a faculty of the graduate school. Third, the dean appoints the advisor. Then, the advisor and student schedule meetings. Then, when the student is ready for the defense, the advisor notifies the office of the graduate school. And finally, the advisor, program coordinator, and the dean form the panel for the defense. The school has designated in-house editors and style reader. The prescribed style is APA format. The student should submit copies of the thesis or dissertation for the panelists at the office of the graduate school not later than two weeks before the schedule of the defense. The composition of the panel shall be a researcher and or statistician, a specialist in the field of study, and an external evaluator or a specialist. For PhD, there shall be five panelists, and for master's degree, there shall be three panelists. The chair of the panel prepares a record of the panel's comments and recommendations. The office of the graduate school will assist the student in preparing the food for the advisor and the panel keeping in mind the core value of simplicity. Revision should be finished within one semester following the final defense. If the deadline is not met, the student is required to re-enroll in research supervision. A candidate who fails in the oral defense shall be required to do a re-defense. He or she is given a maximum of one year to revise his or her paper and re-defend it before the panel. The following fees shall be settled for thesis and dissertation. Thesis 1 is 12,500. Thesis 2 is 16,500. Dissertation 1 is 20,500. Dissertation 2 is 5,000. And Dissertation 3 is 27,000. It shall be for the panel members, panel chair, advisor, and to cover administrative cost. All theses, dissertation, or action research payments should be made at the finance office. No payment will be made to individual persons or to the office of the graduate school. Feasibility Study Students who are enrolled in Feasibility Study have to defend their paper. Feasibility Study is the final requirement to complete the degree. Master's Project Paper Students who enrolled master's project paper writing prior to the current semester will follow the prevailing output, which shall be chapters 1 to 3. Students who are enrolled in master's project paper writing for the first time will write an action research. No classes will be held for master's project paper writing course. Graduation Requirements Only students who have completed all the requirements of a degree program may be allowed to graduate or participate in the graduation ceremonies. A student shall accomplish the following. Completion of all the courses in the program. Passing of the comprehensive examinations. Passing of the final thesis or dissertation defense. Fulfillment of residency requirement. Two-thirds of the total units excluding thesis or dissertation. Settlement of all financial obligations to the school. Submission of the following to the office of the graduate school. Admission credentials. Three bound copies of the final feasibility studies, project paper, thesis, or dissertation. One CD containing a copy of the final thesis, dissertation, and the abstract. Thank you for attending this year's virtual orientation program for the Graduate School Department. Have a good day. Let us sing with pride the St. Joseph's College Hymn.